Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Do Politicians Practice What They Preach? In this video we're going to be looking at, Are Conservatives Really Conservative? Now, this series is brought to you by our new book, Are All Lives Equal? Why Cost-Benefit Analysis Values Rich Lives More and How Philosophy Can Fix It? Stick around to the end to learn more. Now, in the last video, we looked at the philosophical position of conservatism and what that is. In this video, we are going to look at whether or not self-described conservatives in the U.S. actually live up to their claims of conservatism or not. Philosophical conservatism focuses on a lack of radical change, respect for empirically successful governments, and support for existing hierarchies. If you want more context, check out the previous video in the series, but if not, let's get started. So, first we're going to look at some of the ways that the positions of American self-proclaimed conservatives match this ideology. Then we'll, we'll look at the ways that they fail to live up to it. An obvious way that modern conservative is fit the mold of conservatism is in attitudes about gay and trans people. A political disagreement where the underlying philosophical disjuncture between conservative and liberal movements becomes clear is in the treatment of the gay and trans community. Liberals see this as an issue of individual rights and equality. Conservatives see this as a radical change to the fabric of society that will upend families and challenge existing hierarchies. The point is not to hash out these arguments for and against gay and trans rights here, but rather to say that resistance to this large-scale change in people's views about these issues, which have happened historically quite quickly, and concern that they might challenge existing hierarchies and structures is deeply conservative in the philosophical sense. In the same vein, conservative support of so-called parents' rights to educate their children in a particular tradition, whether that's a racist one, a homophobic one, or just a religious one, is deeply conservative. It focuses both on preserving ideals of the past, but also on maintaining existing hierarchies, not allowing children to disagree with their parents or find universal, rational viewpoints on their own. Continuing with this line of thinking, opposition to critical race theory is a particularly conservative position, as it prioritizes the cohesion of the community around a shared ideology of past greatness over truth or accurate pictures of a country's history. Conservatism privileges stability and community cohesion, so theories which question that idea of stability or tar the collective identity are opposed. Anything that challenges the hierarchy itself is problematic. It is also notable that this can highlight some of the hypocrisy, or at least some of the tension in conservatism that claims to focus on empirical evidence, but is willing to quash any evidence that leads to instability or claims that harm the communal identity or existing hierarchies, making the claim that conservatives are not just oppressing dissent to gain empirical gain apparent empirical success even more questionable. Now, however, there are many positions adopted by those that call themselves conservatives which are deeply opposed to the views of conservatism. The most apparent of these is the Trump campaigns, aided by many sitting Republicans, attempt to subvert democracy by delegitimizing the 2020 electoral process and attempting to engage in a violent coup to overtake the government. This is unconservative for several reasons. First, it was an attempt at revolutionary instead of incremental change, even if you think that the election process was completely flawed and corrupt. Conservatives support gradual change, not violent revolution. So a conservative solution would not be violently attempting to overtake the capital. Second, it was an unjustified opposition to the systems that are in power to determine the next elected leader. Conservatives generally support the existing hierarchies and systems on face value. Even to those who believe in the quote-unquote big lie, the response was antithetical to conservatism as an ideology because it tried to break down the systems themselves, not tried to work incrementally to change them. Another element of the Trump campaign that could be considered unconservative was the idea of draining the swamp. 
that the current political order and the elite were corrupt or out of touch with the American people and so needed to be completely replaced. Once again, this revolutionary and systematic change from someone with no experience governing, no empirical track record of success in government, was unconservative because it's not incremental, it is not based on empirical evidence, and it is not trying to preserve the existing hierarchies. It's in fact doing the opposite of all three of those. It's destroying existing hierarchies, it is not empirically based, and it is challenging uh, in a revolutionary, not incremental way. However, even setting Trump aside, there are many other positions held by so-called Republicans that are far from conservative, who claim to be conservative. One is opposition to Roe versus Wade, the around 50-year-old decision that was recently struck down by the Supreme Court upholding the constitutional right to an abortion. The elimination of this precedent was stunningly unconservative because it entirely demolished a precedent that had stood for more than 50 years, or around 50 years. A more conservative route had been taken for years by the courts of incrementally weakening Roe without eliminating it completely. That process that had been going on for many years of weakening the protections for abortion in states without overturning it was a very conservative process in terms of process. It was incremental. It was grassroots and empirically based and happening at different levels. But this sudden, untested revolutionary change of completely abolishing the right by the Supreme Court was deeply anti-conservative. Yet another place where so-called conservatives went astray from the philosophical underpinnings of conservatism is in their opposition to Obamacare, or the Affordable Care Act. This law was an incrementalist change that had been tested by individual states before, some with Republican governors, and was based on principles of expanding health care access that have proved very positive in other countries around the world. It was focused on maintaining and supporting existing power structures with insurance and health care providers instead of overturning them completely. It was not the sweeping socialization of medicine that many Republicans painted it to be. It was not revolutionary. It was incremental. It was not something that was top-down. It was empirically based and based on systems that had been done in other places. Their hatred for Obama made them oppose what would otherwise be a conservative response as opposed to a progressive, complete socialization of health care. There are many situations where the ideologies of politicians are divorced from their actions. One is with the politicians that claim all lives are equal, then endorse economic frameworks that are explicitly say that some lives are worth tens or hundreds of times more. To learn more about this and how philosophy can fix it, check out our new book, Are All Lives Equal?, available now on Amazon uh, in paperback. Also, check out the website for a couple of blogs about the book, or if you want to learn more, you can read the first chapter there. So the answer to the question are conservatives really conservatives is sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. This is all the more reason for you to research the actual positions of who you vote for. Just because someone calls themselves a conservative doesn't mean they support all aspects of conservatism. What do you think? Are there other examples you can think of where so-called conservative politicians actually took positions that are opposed to the fundamental tenets of conservatism? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like this video and you want to see more and you want to see the rest of this series. We have three more positions we're going to cover uh, throughout the course of this series. Watch this video more here at carnadies.org and stay skeptical, everybody.